Shout out to Chris. Shout out to my lady for setting this up. I appreciate y'all. All love. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Chris Gunther Show. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure that you like and share this video. I would greatly appreciate it. Got a chance to sit down here this morning with my guy, my brother, one of the coldest hoopers to ever touch a ball in Youngstown or Warren, Mr. Jesse Harden. What's going on with you, brother? I'm much, man. Chilling. Nice to be here with you, man. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Man, so now you guys are actually getting a chance to, well, you're going to find out today about the TBT yeah. tournament, correct? Yeah, find out today at 1 o'clock, the bracket reveal. Hopefully we get in one of the 24 spots, and if not, hopefully we're alternate, so just in case something silly happens, uh, we can get in. So how did this whole thing even start for you? Uh, My senior year of college, um, I was playing with a team, Cam Bulldogs, uh, yeah. ran by Mark Moore, and... Um, that was probably my probably my best best time I played mm -hmm. with them. I think I had 27 points or something like that against the Fort Wayne Maddens, the G League team. Yeah. So we knocked them out, and then we play. I forget we played like an Indiana, like Hoosiers alumni team, and um, ended up losing to them. But that's how it all got started in 2016 that summer on my rookie season. Your rookie season, from you as a rookie to where you're at now, how much has your game developed? Uh, it's developed a lot. Just being, you gotta, I'm more of a student of the game now. And it, like growing up, um, you gotta pick your spots and do what you do best. Yeah. You can't be some player that you're not. Don't I know it? Yeah. You know man. that. So I feel like just over the years I've developed that being a better shooter, just being, like I said, more of a student of the game. Being more of a student of the game is something that you always need because if you can learn it, then you can, you know, become better. Yeah. During this whole, like, time with you as a player, man, like, how much have you grown as a person? Oh, man, just not trying to be hot-headed, uh, just trying to stay focused. You know, it's, it's bigger than winning and losing. It's the, I don't want to say the outcome, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, winning and losing, it's important, but. It, yeah. You just have to find yourself, whether you're high or low. So Yeah, whether you're high or low. Now, you guys will be finding out today if you have made it to, you know, the next round of that tournament. Even if you don't make it to that next round, your grind isn't stopping. Oh, no, never. My grind, yeah, everybody wants to play for $2 million, but you got to think bigger picture, too, overseas and all of that. It's not going to stop me. It's going to make me grind harder, to be honest, and show them why we should have been in the tournament. How did you even start, like, basketball? Like, what made you want to pick up a ball and start playing? Oh, man. Growing up in the family, it was basketball or football and go to school. So, I mean, all my cousins and yeah. uncles, Cordy Davidson, Cache Murray. Man, one of the best players, two of the best players so, to ever touch a ball. So, just even it. watching them growing up, it was like, man, I really want to do this. Court, yeah. Man, Courtney used to beat me up. Beat me up on the court, and now it's like she won't let me get my rematch or nothing. But nah, it, it's man. all love, cuz man, I, I got stories about Courtney for days. Like, oh, bro, I'll, I'll never forget. And I, I tell her this story all the time, anytime I like see her. So it was an Ursland Open Gym, mm -hmm. and one of Ursland's best football and basketball players at that time was Garden Courtney. And I ain't gonna say the person. I want to know who the name. I want to know the name. Let's just say that Courtney dropped him to the point when the whole gym went crazy. So I think she had went like a move where she kind of sized him up and she had it like this and then pulled it back and as she pulled it back dude like stumbled uh, and then she right. made the three and everybody lost a freaking mind so Courtney thank you for showing that to a young brother even as a kid because I wanted to try that so appreciate you Courtney I'm gonna have to find out who that football player I'll tell you I'm off curious. camera I, I, can't, I can't even say it on camera because he'll curious. probably knock me out but it's all good <laughs> But that's so amazing, though, man. So, like, you come from a you know athletic family. Like, when did basketball really start to become that sport to you? Probably in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, because that's when AAU started. So yeah. I got used to oh, traveling to different cities, staying in the hotels, and I'm like, oh man, I, I like this yeah. lifestyle. I like I like doing this because you remember football wasn't traveling doing AAU and Not all at that. All. So I'm like, oh, I love staying in hotels. I love being on the road playing against different people. So that's when I figured out it was the sport for me. And I was decent at it growing up. So I loved it then. When did your game start to develop? Um, Probably in seventh or eighth grade. Um, probably evolved as a shooter. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I started adding things to my game that can separate me from the next player. Yeah. So probably 7th, 8th grade is when I really start taking it serious. And here I am now. 
your freshman year, you play a Kennedy Catholic, have a pretty good, decent year. I mean, you, you don't see as much varsity as some people do, but right. you got a chance to play varsity as a freshman. What was that like for you? I mean, it was awesome playing with Kyle Randall, my guy. Yeah, man. I mean, he was showing me the ropes, and uh, we ended up going to the state championship and losing. I mean, it's still an accomplishment because some people don't even get to see the state championship. Sure, you know? no. Some don't even get out the first round of the playoffs. Right. So the fact that I got to see that as a freshman and learn from a, a great player like him meant a lot. You leave uh, you leave Kennedy Catholic and then you go over to Harding as a sophomore. How did, well, first of all, what made you decide to leave Kennedy? Uh, There's a lot of stuff that happened, but the main reason, they uh, let Coach Marlin go. Yeah. You know, so. And. I wanted to be somewhere where I felt comfortable. You know, I felt comfortable with him being there. And I, I didn't know who was going to lead us yeah. at that time that next year. So I ended up transferring to Warren Harding. I mean, people don't know this, but I was going to school in Warren when I was growing up, you know, and I ended up just going back to Gerard and then <laughs> Kennedy yeah. and then I went back to Warren. So Warren has always been a home, you know. It's not like a random place, yeah. as most people would think. So, yeah, that's end up transferring my sophomore year and, and spent my rest of my high school career there. What was one of the greatest experiences that you had at Harding? Uh, Basketball-wise or? Basketball-wise. Okay. Probably, uh, everybody knows we were sponsored by Nike and all that. So, Nike brought, like, the Nike ID computers. Yeah. And they had them all set up in the cafeteria, so... Everybody, I, all the students during lunchtime go over there and make a shoe and all that. And then, yeah. like, as players, we got to make a shoe, and Nike ended up sending sending the shoe to us. They sent y'all the shoe. Sent, sent us the shoe. that's back in high school. Sent us the shoe, man. So that's one of the moments. I mean, obviously, winning and district titles, all that stuff means a lot. But I feel like yeah. that moment will always stick with me because I feel like not a lot of people get to experience that. Nah, not a lot of people get to experience it. And, you know, you experienced going up against a couple pros, including Terry Rogier. For sure. I want to say you faced off against him, was it your junior season or sophomore season? We played against each other for three years, sophomore, junior, and senior year. So. When anytime you guys matched up, like, did you even have an idea that he was going to go pro even back then? I mean, he had, you could see that he had the potential for sure. Like, we played AAU together on the same AAU team, which a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. So you can see, like, as the years went on, you like, okay, he's starting to get it. Like, he's got game. You know what I mean? So in his senior year, he really broke out. Yeah. So I, I seen all the flashes that he had that he can make it. And that's my guy, so nothing but love to you, bro. Nothing but love to him, definitely, because he was one of the first guys I got a chance to interview last summer that was on, like, the professional athlete right. status. So, of course, you know, shout out to T. Rowe. You got a chance to, you know, have a very successful high school career. You started varsity as a sophomore. Well, you came off the bench, and then yeah. you were, you know, thrust into yep. that you know, starting role. And then from there, you go on to Walsh, had a phenomenal career. What's the difference between playing in Harding and playing at, at Walsh? I feel like Harding prepared me so much for that next level because, like you said, we was talking off camera. We had the big men, the yeah. athletic. Man, and as a guard, I remember trying to go up for a layup, getting my stuff sent to, like, the third row, bro. <laughs> I was like, screw it. I'm going to stay out here and shoot the threes. Right, right, right. But, uh, yeah, Harding, like, just our whole mentality, uh, the way we did things prepared me so much yeah. for that next level because Coach Arna was, like, get ready for college was his thing. You know what I'm saying? You're not preparing for high school anymore. You're preparing for that next level. Yeah. So anything you could take from here to and take it to college, you'll be fine. Yeah, because you get a chance to really see how the game is going to, you know, progress you. Right. What I mean by progress you is you can start off at the high school level, but every coach knows the players that really can't play at the next level right. versus those that might be able to, but you're not 100% sure. Right. So you pour so much into those coaches, not so much coach, but you pour so much into those players mm -hmm. as a coach right then and there. And that's obviously what Coach Arnold saw in you. You go over to Walsh, have a phenomenal career. I believe your junior year, you scored a thousand. Like for your career, you had a yeah. thousand points. Yes, sir. A well, take me back points. through that season for you, man. Uh, we're going up and down. Uh, we end up being ranked in the country, like number twenty-four in the country. At the end of the conference tournament, we still don't make the NCAA tournament. Crazy. Ranked, ranked in the top twenty-five. Division two is different because they go off of regions. The top yeah. eight in the region, and I think ours was our region was separated with three conferences. So our champion got in and probably second place got in. So 
How you, imagine feeling you're number twenty four in the country. Yeah. You like I'm about to go to the I'm about to go to the dance. And then you watching a selection show and you don't get in. Right. Man. Number twenty four in the country. Yeah. You know, so it's different, but everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason and you still went and had a phenomenal season. What was probably your best game that you had at Walsh? My best game at Walsh was probably I had forty five points against Ferris State, hit the game winning three. So that's probably, and I shot it well. I think I went like 15 and 19. So it, it was a, he was in the it zone. Was a good, I had a good day. It was a, it I was mean, a you had day. 45 in the game winner. Don't get no better than that. Uh, yeah, I guess. You I'm ain't going to admit it. I'll admit it for 45, 15, and 19 from the field, bro. And I'm assuming, and I could be wrong, but I'm assuming your three clip was on that game too. It, it was, it was all right that day. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, that's, it yeah, you scored 45 <laughs> prime. Like, we know what's better than all right. Don't sit up here and be hey, nice now. missed a couple free throws, probably two free throws. But I mean, it's all right. We got the dub. <laughs> yeah, got man, the dub. Got that's you. all that matters. So from there, you know, your senior career doesn't end the way that you want it to end. Yep. You know, we all want to end with a championship yep. that didn't happen. <clears throat> but you know, what was it like, like collectively for you though during those four years at Walsh? My four years at Walsh were amazing. Like, the bond that you create with your teammates, you living with them, working out with them, traveling with them. That's the thing that people don't understand about going to college. Like you create so many friendships and yeah. bonds that last forever. Like I was just on FaceTime the other day with my teammates, just talking about the <laughs> old days, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, it's great to see how everybody's growing up and where everybody's life has taken them so far. Yeah. So younger guys, whoever watching this, go to college, go create those memories, create bonds and be happy. Yeah, and then you got a chance to, from college, you know, go play overseas, bro. Like, how did that whole experience come about for you? Uh, end up signing with an agent. In my first deal in Hungary, it was different. Playing basketball in Europe, physical, you know, um, like being a student of a game comes in handy because you're watching film more. Yeah. And you got to know what the players are going to do. It's not like they're going to come with a whole different package that, that day they play you, but... Just paying attention to detail was a big thing. It was a it was an adjustment, but for the shot clock yeah. and the rules. Some of the rules are different, but it was it wasn't a bad transition. I feel like I held my own. Did you have success right away, or did that have to you know come over time? Uh, I didn't have the success that I was used to. I'll say that. So I, you figure coming from being a scorer to having to score less and play defense and be an actual point guard having to get more assists and rebounds and helping the team in other ways than just scoring. So, Helping them in other ways than just scoring, was that a difficult transition? No, because I feel like when you're a competitor and your will to win is high, you'll do whatever whatever it is to get the job done. Yes. Because you figure overseas, you can be on a one-day contract. You have one bad game, and they got your plane ticket ready for you to go back home. Wow. So. You got to be gritty and grimy and get the job done. So it's night. just as cutthroat as the NBA or as the G League? Oh, it's way more cutthroat. Way more cutthroat than the uh, NBA and G League. They keep you in the G League team because you're on that contract. They don't want to waste no money or anything like that. Overseas, they got 30, 30 more people waiting for your spot. Oh, we're going to see how he how he plays this game. If he don't play good, we're going to tell him. We're going to have the next dude already out here and then just tell him we got your ticket ready to go. Even though you did not experience that, is there any players out there that you saw that happen to that you was like, man, they really missed out? Yeah, one of my ex-teammates while I was playing in Chile, um, he was having knee issues, but he was still playing, playing really good, and the team just like, no, we need a different fit. So it like kind of shocked me because the guy's averaging 15 points, probably like seven, eight rebounds, and you send him home. Yeah and we're winning. Now, if we're losing, that's a different thing because over there, if you're from there, you're on the team. Your contract is guaranteed. Yeah. They're going to keep you. They can't change you. But us, we're the foreigners over there. They can change us whenever they want. If they say, Chris, I want you to come over there, score 30 points a game. If you have a bad night, say you have 28 and y'all lose, you still had a good game. It Maybe it been your teammates that didn't have a good game. You're going home. It's more cutthroat than people anticipated, you yeah, know, but for sure. this is what you signed up for, too. Yep. Like, you already knew picking up that ball, there was going to come a chance when you did get cut from right, the team. Yeah. You know, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Just learning my teammates, you know, uh, the language barrier. Just, I feel like those were the things that I faced. I really never faced anything that was 
really bad, but being held to a higher standard over there. Yeah. So being held to a higher standard, what are the expectations of you over there? Oh, over there, they want you to score, rebound, get assists, sign autographs after the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they want you to do everything, and they want to win. And when they when you don't win, it's like, oh, they get nervous. Then the messages come in. Yeah. You don't know what they're saying, so you got to translate it. But what are you doing? Why aren't you playing good? All that. So that's the stuff you got to deal with. So you got to make sure you have a good game every single game. Best game overseas for you so far? Oh, man. Uh, probably, I probably had a 30-point game somewhere. I'm, I had a 30-point <laughs> game in Chile. I had a 30-point game in Uruguay. So probably one of them. I don't really know the stats like that, but I know – I had a few good games in a couple places. Have you had any teams of the upper divisions contact you, such as the G League or the NBA? Nah, I mean, I've had workouts with the Fort Wayne Mad Ants, the Can Charge. Coming from a D2, you're the little guy, you know, even though you play overseas and all that. So uh, it's a respect thing. Yeah. So I could be better than the Division One guy, but they're going to go get the Division One guy because of where he went. Because he went D1. Yeah. What advice would you give to those other players that want to follow in your footsteps? The, go where you fit in. You know, the, if you fit in a Division One and feel like you can do that, do that. If you go Division Two, that's fine. There's so many Division Two players that are overseas or yeah. in the NBA making money. It's all about the fit, to be honest to me. Like, yeah, if you, everybody want to go to Duke, Kentucky, Michigan State, Ohio State. But if that's not where you fit and where you can thrive, yeah. then that's not for you. There's nothing wrong with Walsh, Finley, uh, Florida Southern, any of those colleges. I mean, you just have to go where you fit in and where you can be the best player you can be so you can get to the next level. Yeah, get to the next level. Anytime you go into the next level, you'll have challenges and setbacks like COVID-19. How much has COVID-19 affected your game? Man, it's, it's affected a lot man i can only go outside now i can go to the gyms but before when everything happened i couldn't go outside couldn't go live it was yeah. basically like stay in the house and do push-ups do sit-ups do what you can but is there's nothing like shooting a basketball getting nothing your like it man in my opinion i think it's the greatest therapy i think it's the greatest therapy it's the greatest thing that you can do because you could go hoop you can clear your mind you yeah. can you know elevate your game what things have you added in your game since everything was pretty much taken away from you? Oh, I can't tell that on camera, man. I can't. <laughs> you trying to get me to tell to all my – look, we ain't going to talk about that on camera. I ain't telling you all my secrets, man, because I might go hoop somewhere later on today. That being said, we're going to leave. We can talk about that off camera. I can't tell you all that, man. But uh, just my ball handling and, like, I like getting others involved. Yeah. So, you know, uh, when I go play now – I like to use a lot of screen and roll because that's what they use a lot overseas. And yeah. Finding the next the next player so he can score. Like, we could go play and I could hit two, three threes in a row. Then we fast break. I pass to you. Pass to me because you think I'm going to hit it. I'm going to pass it back to you so yeah. you can get going. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. This is when I knew b-ball was really starting to become your thing because we had played together as kids. Yeah. Most people didn't know that, but, you know, play together as kids yep. and, you know, as kids – you could kind of see those guys that were good or not good. Like, I remember us having people like Craig and Dalen and Preston, you know, guys like that, because we all knew each other. And we all knew people were going to be really good basketball, Mm -hmm. you know, guys. Well, fast forward, I want to say it was freshman year, my freshman year, I think your sophomore year, Mm -hmm. uh, we were playing and pick up games at McDonald Park. Oh, yeah. And you was just out there cooking, out there killing. I'm just like, this dude going to be a problem. (laughs) He gonna be because you had it, and we were so young at that time. Right. So when did like that really killer for you? Like when did that killer mentality start developing? It developed when I found out how bad I wanted it. You know, like of course everybody want to go to the NBA, but I I have to. I know that's not a hundred percent gonna happen. Yeah. So I gotta grind like it's gonna happen. The overseas thing. I was thinking like oh, I don't know if I really want to go overseas and all yeah. that. Yeah. But. Just I uh, found out how bad I wanted to be successful, and that's when it kicked in for me. Most people forget you as a freshman. I want to say at Walsh, you went up against an Ohio State team yep. that had a really good, solid point guard in Aaron Crabb. Yep. Aaron was one of the best guards in the Big Ten at that time. Yep. But you actually went out there and did really good against him. I played all right against him. You know, I- You'll say all right. I'm going to say you did good against him. The reason why I say that is because he was one of the top defenders in the Big Ten at that time. He was somebody that scouts were kind of looking at but not looking at. But then you went in there and did 
really good against him. You had him working for everything, and then he had to check you, and he couldn't even check you all like that. It, it was crazy. Like, as soon as I signed the Walsh and the schedule came out, you all never never realized how many people hit me up. Like, you about to go against Aaron Kraft, blah, 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 this and that. I'm like, oh, he got to check me, too. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to be an easy <laughs> day in the office for him. Yeah, I might be at a D2 and all that, but he got to see me. Yeah, even though Ohio State, they just prevailed because yeah. they were, you know, bigger team, you still held your own against oh, For them. sure. We played against them all four years and no Ws, but at the end of the day, you got to look at the positive things. Uh, teammates played well. I held my own. We didn't get embarrassed. Yeah. So that's a lot of positives to go off from to start the season. Oh, yeah, always. There's always a lot of positives, and, you know, you're a positive person by nature. So with this big tournament coming up now, you know, getting a chance to possibly get selected to play for two mil, even if you don't get selected, how much is that going to drive you to keep going? Oh, it's going to drive me a lot because it's like I'm playing with a guy, a team full of D2 guys. So we already know we're already slept on. So if we don't get in, our career is going to keep going and we're going to show them why we should have got in. Yeah. You know, like, like I told you, all don't sleep on the D2 guys because there's some D2 guys that will – bust you straight up i've seen it happen you know i've seen it happen but hopefully we do get in and that's not the case or do yeah we, i feel like we always have to prove ourselves why do we have to prove ourselves the one guys don't have to prove themselves they're getting in because of the team name you yeah. know and some of them don't deserve to be at a d1 they're not like that you know i think it just really depends on your situation depends on your connections yeah. but ultimately depends on your game too for sure and, you know you definitely have the game you're one of the best players this area you know saw and Appreciate then you continue that. to you know keep you know going if anybody wanted to connect with you a little more about you how can they do that you reach me on twitter uh 2j harden too um facebook i'm really not on instagram like that i feel like i just got <laughs> instagram just 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 to, to have it just to have because it was in but Jesse Harden Jr. on Facebook, and like I said, on Twitter, at 2 Harden 2 Nothing else needs to be asked. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Harden, owner Chris Gunnish. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time. Appreciate you, my Appreciate brother. Appreciate you, my guy.